Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to Physique, the free energy special interest group. We have started way back in uh, 2015, uh, at the beginning of the year, I guess, yeah, February, uh, when we broke off from uh, the Cash Foundation group because we realized that, you know, it, it, it may not be so right if it's just that particular direction. We want to have people from all over and many belief systems to join us here because we are, we love to progress, okay? And we don't want to be judgmental on what uh, the scientists, researchers, developers of alternative free energy can bring forth to the table. So uh, without much ado, I'm gonna share screen so we can see my PowerPoint presentation and um, Okay, now this is Physic, okay, the Free Energy Special Interest Group. This is our website, truevisionofpeace.com slash physic.html. And if you were to scroll down, you will be able to see, okay, now this is, this is something that I started and altruistically doing this mostly by myself and then but we got our brothers and sisters here right from the beginning james uh Fres joined me and and then pontus and ron especially john is uh, ron as well right from the beginning and then we grew and we grew and uh, we've got about mm, a couple of thousand uh followers on uh youtube our youtube channel our facebook and um uh the uh, subscribe members uh, we have quite a number and then we if you scroll down you will be able to see okay the announcements of the speakers the speakers the meeting format you'll read about it and then we have uh, of course uh, uh, well you know if you have some extras you can pay forward because we need funds and uh, it's coming from my deep, my pockets and there's a hole in my pocket now paying for loads of things that needed to be paid for to get this going for two years now. And then you join us by clicking on this button so you can uh, be uh, with us receiving newsletters and reports and things like, not quite newsletters, reports rather. It's just once a month, you know, and invitation to join the meetings that we have once a month, but it's, uh, you know, we break it into two meetings so that we can have two videos per month. And uh, Martin Berger has come up with, um, the CEO of Blue Energy Canada, has uh, come up with the um, idea that he would support um, a group, a breakaway group, which uh, Elizabeth Donovan and I had uh, created called the foundation that he Martin would want to fund that and support that to, to, to make it grow into eventually a sovereign nation that is uh, enabling researchers, scientists, developers of alternative energy to work together in a lab, um, you know, uh, free from the um, uh, what you call <laughs> the strict policies and whatever from the governing governing authorities. So, as you know, what breakaway uh, sovereign nations are like. Okay, I need not elaborate. So, if you scroll down the site, you'll be able to see who had been speaking here in physics before, and we had Neil Gleamer as well. And Neil Gleamer was talking about the ascension codes for humanity. So, this is not just a scientific group exploring the development of um, free energy, alternative energy. Uh, it is also about healing because this is what it is. So Neil Gleamer was talking about the Ascension Codes. And then uh, we have uh, Michael Shrimpton, of course, Martin had appeared a couple of times to speak about how, you know, this work can be done with the cryptocurrency that is coming up with called the Solution Coin that we will be having an ICO in due time to generate the funds to build the foundation in Canada somewhere. <laughs> and we can't mention where, <laughs> not for the moment. So there you are. So these are the speakers. They're very special people. We have Marina Jacoby speaking a couple of times as well. She's amazing. She's such a good supporter of physique, a sister here. And we have, uh, 
Mark McKinley, and we have, uh, of course, you know, uh, Kerry Cassidy and uh, James Gillilan from the ET Ranch, and these are the uh, uh, executive council members of Physic. And as you scroll down, then you'll be able to see the meeting codes and everything. Because when you click on a link, it brings you down. And then we, we have these meetings recorded. And then we'll have our YouTube videos put up here on our site. As well as uh, if you visit our YouTube channel, you see all this. You catch up with all the meetings where the speakers talk about. And we have Alina, the star traveler, Alina Kapunik. Uh, talking about the SSP uh, technologies, which is so, so out of this world, uh, amazingly advanced. And that's Martin talking about the cryptocurrency solution coin. And we have Kevin Hay, Marina Jacoby, and so on and so forth. That's so many of us here. And we're one big family. <laughs> All right. So um, I think uh, I'll share my PowerPoint presentation now. So this is the 55th meeting and today is the 8th of August 2018 and uh, well we're supposed to start on time but it doesn't matter because um, we don't have our first speaker here now I'll tell you why in a minute so uh, we then uh, have uh, sorry hang on a minute okay right so if I were to okay <clears throat> I'll just move this aside a bit so we can see the PowerPoint presentation. Right, if, if I were to um, go through the 54th, no, it's the 50, 55th now. Free Energy Special Interest Group is a platform where science meets spirituality, where we all come here together to share ideas, share um, innovations and uh, the progress of our work. Okay, sorry, hang on a minute. That is the 55th. Okay, oops. Right, right. So this is the agenda. Do go to our website, okay? TrueVisionOfFeast.com slash physic.html to, to learn more about what we do as a group. Um, so the um, agenda is a quick presentation of physic, which I have done just before the meeting started. New members, and uh, new members self introduction, which we had done. And number three, uh, okay, I'm Crystal Go. I'm the founder and initiator of physic and uh, administrator as well. So the co-chair is uh, okay. It's James Ring for the moment um, because we only have one speaker for now. Okay, um, as I said, Don can't make it, and I'll tell you why. Okay, in a minute. So James is the co-chair for this meeting. Right, um, speakers, Don Estes and Dr. John Miliski, Miliski with uh, Martin Berger. Okay, and the first speaker, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, and first speaker, Don can't make it. I tell you why, because he has been hospitalized. And uh, John, if you could, John, Dr. John Miliski, could you please mute yourself? <laughs> mute yourself. You know, you hover your mouse over the the microphone icon at the bottom of the window. Can you see it? Oh, let me see where it is. Then. I don't see it. You don't see it. Okay, I stopped sharing. I mean, uh, before I stop sharing, are you are you muting yourself? Because there's a lot of noise in the background. I'm struggling to be heard. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, John is our speaker now. Uh, Dr. John Miluski, PhD, of uh, Super Kinetic Incorporated is an internationally recognized leader and consultant in, the, in his field of advanced materials, holding 30 patents and has over 42 publications. His partner at Blue Energy Canada is Martin Berger, who's joining in the conversation. Okay, uh, and <laughs> they'll be talking about how they're turning glass to gold, which is so exciting. And then after that, we adjourn to the next meeting, which will be the 56th physic meeting on the 5th of September. The speakers are to be announced. Right. Um, I will tell you why in a minute. So I'm going to stop sharing now so, so, so John could mute himself. 
uh, the technology is not that smooth, unfortunately. Okay, stop sharing now. So, uh, John, would you mute yourself, please? Can you see oh, your... I can see it now. Yeah, yeah, okay, please mute yourself because uh, there's a lot of loud on. noise in the background. And um, John, John, at any time you hover your mouse over the bottom left-hand corner of this viewing window, that'll pop up and you can turn it on when you speak. And then because there's a lot of shuffling noise going on, moving the camera around and stuff, uh, it bothers the speaker. So um, yeah. get a habit of turning it on and off. Thank you, John. Yeah, and this is uh, a recording anyway, so we, we can't have a lot of disturbance. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so right. he's uh, up in the filing cabinet there okay. by the looks of it. I don't know if he's finding a treasure for us or. Wonderful. Or That's cool. <laughs> right. Before we get, before we get Martin to hop on to the uh, stage with the microphone, I want to say that our first speaker, supposed first speaker, Don Estes, oh dear, dear Don Estes has been hospitalized. That's why he can't make it. Uh, his wife wrote to me in panic saying that he has been hospitalized and nobody knew for what, what, what's wrong with him. The doctors were baffled. Now, John, Don Estes, Don Estes is a very special person because he has been at it for a long, long time, he, way back in the 60s and the 70s, he already hopped and jump into this bandwagon where he could bring um, loads of spiritual technology to humanity. Right? And uh, he had been actually partnering uh, Robert Monroe, coming up with those uh, spiritual science technology devices and equipment facilitation at the Robert Monroe Institute. And I knew that because I was speaking with him and I said, my, oh my, your devices, your technology is so fantastic. I just so love it because physic is a platform where science meets spirituality and you really are spot on there. And besides, I also used to have a company called Innocence Innovations and his website is called Innocence. Innocence yeah, as well, yeah. So, <laughs> so we do have something in common here. And he actually, uh, I asked him, I said, it sounds familiar like Robert Monroe's Institute's um, technology. He said, yeah, he actually worked with Robert Monroe. He was partnering Cri Robert Crystal, Monroe. Crystal, Crystal, yes? may, may I suggest, you know, on my, com my computer screen here, I see some, you know, just tile after tile after tile of the most incredible people and now my friend john maluski's you know joined this group yeah but let's bring coherence of mm -hmm. consciousness sure. uh to our friend's aid there don mm -hmm. okay let's just take five ten seconds here and each of our own minds go to a place of joy go to a, a it has to be a a, a high frequency moment okay mm -hmm. generate a, a place of joy choose to go to a place of joy and know that he's going to rise and meet to his challenges and learn from them okay? uh, we have so been... let's just let's just hold that energy for 10 seconds here in quiet and and pass that energy along to dawn actually we i wanted to do that but after after what i am planning to do first for dawn estes are you talking about john or dawn before we bring John in, we have to be in a happy place. But now, can we sit together and form a circle? Because we want to do a healing circle for Don Estes, who is lying in a hospital in Santa Monica in California. That's what I was suggesting. Okay, good. So uh, I, I, I actually want all of us here, because we are a physique family here, and um, we know that when... A member is in uh, a crisis like that he or she needs help so let's do that together so if you were to um, okay let me just switch on some light here to to allow me to do a guided meditation so we all could go in there together all right so if we can just sit back and relax into our chairs and sink deep into the cushions of our chairs There are 14 of us right now. Right. So 
I want you now to take in a deep breath, fill up your lungs. When you breathe in, you're breathing in positive vibrational frequencies, love and light into your body from the highest God source. The source of all that is. Breathe in now, fill up your lungs, in, 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 and out. When you breathe out, you're breathing out the stresses that you have accumulated for the day and just let it go, transmute into love and light. Let's do that again. Breathe in. Breathe in energy and breathe out stress. Again for the third time. Breathe in the beautiful radiant light from the highest God source. And breathe out. Whatever that is not in alignment with Creator's loving light. Now I want you to visualize that we are all sitting together, forming a circle with our hands linked. We are forming a healing circle right now. And we imagine we have gone to Santa Monica. California and we have gone to Don Estes hospital room room number 2018 no I'm uh, sorry 2108 yes you can see Don Estes lying on his hospital bed and we all linked arms hands hearts surrounding him and now we call upon our guides our guardian angels our higher self to connect ourselves to the highest god source of all that is the source of all that is the supreme creator and we see this radiant light beaming forth from the source of all that is down to planet earth to Santa Monica, where we all are with Don Estes in the hospital room. Room 2018, the room 2108. And feel the light coursing through from Supreme Creator through our crown chakra, third eye chakra, throat chakra, our heart chakra. And now through the um, the rest of the lower chakras, through the base chakra, and see this toroidal energy of light surrounding each and every one of us. And see this light that connects us to the highest God source, the source energy glowing into our toroidal energy field glowing and connecting us to the Supreme Creator and feel the heart chakra opening up this emerald green becoming so pure so beautifully green and our hearts are opening up now in this circle of healing light we pour forth this emerald green love, healing, loving energy in alignment with Creator's loving light into Don Estes in his hospital room on his bed as he's in the center of this circle of healing light. Feel the light glowing brighter and brighter and brighter as we are protected in our toroidal Field, and so is Don Estes lying on his hospital bed and see his energy glowing and growing as we pour forth from our hearts to Don. And that literally transmutes every small little dark spot or anything that is not in alignment with Creator's loving light, transmuted into light right now and love. 
and feel it in our hearts as his body is glowing from the top of his head to the tip of his toes he's being healed right this now thank you crystal thank you um and so hang on martin just taking a deep breath fill up our lungs and now we are back in the location where we are originally and dawn is okay and now as we're taking a deep breath i'm going to count three down to one or one, two, three, and we have our eyes open and we feel good in every way. And we ourselves are also carrying that healing light in alignment with Creator's loving light at all times. Three, one, two, three, eyes open. Take, take in a deep breath and exhale and relax. Wonderful. Okay, now we're back, Martin. So, Martin, would you do the next guided meditation where? We can fill up ourselves with, I mean, well, raising I, vibrations. I, want, I wanted to uh, share uh, my own uh, health challenges. I went from uh, a mountain climbing, um, you know, great physical shape to a class four acute New York cardio. Okay. There's no class five. Okay. So, uh, generally in life, you know, our death is safely over the horizon. But we are challenged from time to time, always self-administered, okay? I had to own the fact that I created my condition and maybe created it unwittingly and unknowingly, but I could learn how, in fact, I created my condition. And why? What was the purpose of my condition, okay? Generally, our health challenges and crises lead us to a place in the domains of consciousness all about forgiveness energy, self-forgiveness, and, and, and letting go. Okay, letting go. We're dragging all this baggage around like it means something. Okay, and it will eventually wear you down. And so those are the challenges that, that health issues bring us. But they are also the greatest gifts when we're able to make those shifts and transcend them. What I learned in the last two years dwarfs everything I've learned, you know, in the last 62 years dwarfs it. And what it's given me in terms of my own creative access, my own manifesting clarity, uh, absolving myself of habitual negativity, Okay, we can spot ne negativity in others readily. We can even spot it in ourselves if we look at it critically. But the stuff that we can't see is the stuff that's become habitual. Okay, and it becomes habitual for a million different reasons. But it's not an impeccable living, okay, to carry all that crap around. And so we've got to resolve those energies and, and let our corks float, if you would. And back to our our source sense sense and and really you know the wisdom of 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 following your bliss okay mm -hmm. how many of us know where our bliss button is okay where's our bliss well for me it's become the name you couldn't mention Grand Cash mm -hmm. for me to go to a place of source connectedness and joy I just go to Grand Cash mm -hmm. that's where the solution coin family will form its own sovereign domain. Mm -hmm. Now these 2000 <laughs> subscribers you talked about, I see them as airdrop candidates for the solution coin and all future multimillionaires. Now that's a joyful thought to go to. And if you want to heal Don ask, let's have some joy on that, you know? <laughs> so uh, Don, Don has his challenges, but you know, he's a big man too. Mm -hmm. And he will meet those challenges and and our 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 prayer for him should include that he he has that realization okay mm -hmm. and we're there to support him in that and um, he'll find his way 
uh, there is a way. First of all, he has to know that we're, you know, we're infinite beings in a finite little play uh, digital experience, you know. <laughs> so we can change the data sets anytime we want. And, and it's as simple as, you know, how much of that bliss can you stand? You know, the wisdom is follow your bliss. But the practicality of it is it, you try and hang on to that for 12 hours if you're a 14-hour day. <laughs> try it. And I'll tell you, if you can make an hour of it, you got a whole bunch of nice stuff going on in your space and, and you got good times coming. Mm -hmm. So it's that easy. How much bliss can I personally stand? It's a very confronting question. Mm -hmm. It's a very confronting question for each of us. Mm -hmm. What is my bliss tolerance? That's pathetic bliss tolerance, Martin. Come on, you can do better than that. I'm okay. talking real bliss, you know. All right, Martin. I, all right. Okay, let's, let's move on because <laughs> some of us may not have too much time here. Uh, okay. Okay, just, I, 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 want, I want to uh, acknowledge uh, Dr. Maluski for uh, joining the physique a group. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with John for many years. He taught me how to make gold, okay? Mm -hmm. And and I've never had so much fun in my life as when uh, John and I do a little science, okay? Progressing science is what John, you know, he lights up. Uh, he says he's 90 years old, but I've seen him looking like 30 once he starts getting into <laughs> making gold and the science behind it. Um, John understands, um, you know, the digital uh, energy and coatings and magnetics of the world, okay? And he's developed technologies and he's got more patents than, you know, Einstein had. But, well, uh, I have, and he I should have, have had a... I have to read his bio in a moment, Martin. I will introduce him properly. But it's so good that you got John to speak in physique and you had been partnering him to make gold yeah that is so interesting okay i'll turn i'll turn it back to you then now uh, you do the formal i will do introduction. the introduction the formal introduction it. of the speaker thank you martin so before i do that i just want to show you how you can get into the speaker's websites like don estes for instance if you click on don it will take you direct to his website but please do come back to physique and don't get stuck there forever <laughs> um i have to get my webmaster to uh, show me how to do that. But anyway, so there, there you are. You just hover your mouse over the uh, speaker's um, name and uh, it will take you to like like uh, John's website, right? Uh, John, or you want to know about Dr. John Meliski, click on his name and it will then, which I've just done, it will take you there. Um, the, the website called Life, Lifeboat Foundation carries his, his bio, okay? And, uh, and then if you were to search his name, Dr. John Miluski, you will see there's so many YouTube channels and that's where, you know, he gets to be so lovable because you watch him in action. He's so full of this um, child exuberance, you know, when he talks about, as Martin was saying, he may be this age, but it's only a number but he's in spirit, he's a very youthful, energetic person, <laughs> right? So I'm going to stop sharing now. I've shown you how to use our website in physics. I'm going to introduce John properly, okay? Dr. John V. Miluski, um, PhD, P, uh, PhD in engineering of uh, superkinetic uh, Incorporator is an internationally recognized leader and consultant in his field of advanced materials. He is a professional engineer, scientist, inventor, entrepreneur, writer, publisher, editor, and lecturer. He is a retired staff member of Los Alamos National Labs, and you know how famous that one is, and um, has worked previously as a scientific staff member of Exxon Research Center and at Theocall Chemical Rocket Engine Division. He holds 30 patents and has over 42 publications in his field. He authored Ormus as a guest, Ormus, O-R-M-U-S, The Effects of Magnetic Water, Superlight, One Source, One Force, Assembly of the Tiny Trap, Viscous and Short Fiber Technology, Development of Manufacturing Capabilities for Hafnium Carbide Fibers, Final report and co edited the Crystal Source book from Science to Metaphysics and Handbook of Reinforcements for Plastics. 
His patents include method and apparatus for continuous controlled production of single crystal whiskers, single crystal whisker electric light filament, method of producing silicon carbide articles, method for producing solar cell grade silicon from rice hulls, rocket motor, composite heat shield, light metal alloys strengthened by oxide carbide on nitride fibers, apparatus for impact testing, high strength fiber reinforced composite, and method of growing single crystal ribbons. John, along with his son, Dr. Peter D. Maluski, had their crystal filament light bulb invention patented and put on permanent exhibit at the Smithsonian American History Museum, titled Lighting a Revolution, honoring the six most significant ideas in lighting field from 1950 to year 2000. So there you are. This is a very accomplished gentleman we have with us here. We're so honored to have you, John. John, would you now unmute yourself and take over the microphone? We are indeed in the presence of greatness here, folks. Enjoy yes. John Maluski. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. John, <laughs> can you unmute yourself? John, unmute yourself. Uh, James, can you help unmute John? I don't have the feedback. Oh, oh did. he's unmuted John, now. There you go. Oh, okay. there you go. John. You know, you're talking about my enthusiasm for my work. Yeah, all the time when I was married for the last 35 years or so, when I, up until recent, until we moved out here, I had a lab. I used to go to and work, and uh, I, I got a couple of government contracts. I was down there all the time. So when my wife went to one of her meetings with her girls, I said, oh, my husband, he just loves his lab. He just loves his lab. And the girl said, what color is it? I thought it was a laboratory dog. <laughs> but I used to, every time I had any time left, I'd go down to the laboratory and do some mad science, as they say. <clears throat> and, but I had to close that down when I came out here. I, before I left there, I had uh, I, uh, a room, maybe like I. John, your, your volume, John, your volume is a bit low. Could you is move it, your mic closer? I'm holding it up. Is it speaking through this? Yeah, it's coming. Oh, a little okay. closer, a little closer, if you can, a little louder. Thank you, John. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'll, I'll gonna get used to this whole thing here. Uh, so I, I had before I left, I had a lab. I had an old uh, porch area. I had three or four microwaves and a couple of ovens in there and everything else. And that's where I did the original. Well, I actually did the original work in the bigger lab. I had at 2,500 square feet, and I was growing crystals of silicon carbide, sapphire, and hafnium carbide and stuff like that. We had a continuous furnace where it was full of hydrogen, and we had uh, a glass, a quart suit from one end to the other, about eight feet long. And so we were burning hydrogen at both ends of the furnace. You know, it's very difficult to have a furnace with doors open on both ends and still keep keeping the atmosphere closed inside. So we develop techniques of, uh, of using gas pressures to balance the flow of gas inside and everything. And so to, to make something like hafnium carbide, we had to have a source of carbon that we were using methane gas and hafnium chloride. But I don't want to go with the whole process of making the whiskers, but we made all kinds of materials, did a lot of work. And for 40 years, I did work with growing crystals. Uh, sapphire, silicon carbide, hafnium carbide, uh, aluminum nitride, and quite a few different materials. And, uh, but recently, when I was still in the old lab, I had this idea. I had heard that some guy down in, in, uh, in Texas somewhere, a lower Texas near El Paso, he was getting precious metals out of magnetite, you know? And he was getting rhodium and iridium. And so uh, I heard that after he's starting to get a little successful, the guys from uh, Engelhart Industries sent a bunch of goons down and tore his whole lab apart and took everything away. And, and so, but at that point, I heard that it had a lot of stuff, good, good precious metals in it. So I had my lab uh, uh, before, you know, where I was going to Whiskers. And so I said, well, 
this magnetite supposed to have all this stuff, so I'll see if I can find out what's in it. So I took magnetite and put it in my furnace. First, I put, reduced it with hydrogen. You could take Fe304, reduce it with hydrogen, and then they could, I mix it up with carbon and reduce it with carbon. And then by the old thermite process, you reduce it with aluminum. And so I got these products that came out of the furnace around that same time. My son was getting his PhD in material science here at North Carolina State. He says, he called me, I said, hey, Pop, I just got a job. I'm gonna run the crystallography laboratory at the lab, at the school down here. And if you got any samples, you want to analyze X, X-ray diffraction analyzation. I said, I just have finished making these things. So I sent these samples to him and he, he ran them through his X-ray diffraction. And he came up with this, all three materials showed not only iron from reducing iron oxide with either carbon, hydrogen, or silicon, or aluminum, they found out this hathium carbide uh, was giving uh, uh, rhodium and iridium car carbides are coming out of it. The, the presence of rhodium and iridium, and when we back calculated, we had about 10 to 12 percent of the of the had uh, excuse me there. Iron oxide having hafnium carbide, having, not hafnium, excuse me, having rhodium and iridium in there. And I said, gee, all that precious metal coming out of that, up to 10%. I said, gee, you know, that's 3,000 ounces per ton. The, a, a ton contains 33,000 ounces, but 10% of that raw material, hafnium, uh, of the raw material, iron oxide being a precious metal. And so, so I got the heart of using using this microwave and other heatings for, to looking for precious metals. But at the same time, I put some uh, some glass quartz glass. Uh, actually, it was started out with a uh, pickle jar glass from a pickle jar, I ground it up and put it in the microwave, heating it up because I, that when I moved from my big lab, I didn't have the big furnaces anymore, so I wanted to get hot to get using the half using the microwave and I heated it up. And I got significant amounts of gold in the glass if I melted the glass in the microwave. And so what a microwave does when it melts glass, if you put, take the glass and heat it up to the same temperature around 1100 degrees centigrade around, you know, it just sits there and you don't get anything. But you put it in the microwave, microwave stirs and turns and twists what is in there. So if you look in the crucible, what it's in the microwave, you see it's still turning around the microwave. The wave moves back and forth as it's in there. And it heats one spot, it changes the conductivity, so it moves to another spot back. And so that stirs and mixes, tears the, the glass molecules apart. And inside the, the molecule of the liquid glass are little crystallites of quartz. As you break the crystallites open, there's monatomic gold. I, John, I can, John, can I interject here? My, yeah. I did 244 of these uh, crystal uh, or these uh, uh, crystal right. microwave uh, burn experience after John taught me how to make gold in Al Albuquerque. And I always noticed that when I was in the zone, so to speak, yeah. there was a sort of a plasma, a cold plasmatic effect around the crucible. Yeah. Okay, and we'd hold it there at 11.50, 11.55, 11.45, you know, yeah. and it'd fluctuate a little bit uh, with the microwave uh, solenoid switches and stuff. But but I always noticed uh, towards the end, I was looking for it, that plasmatic sheen. There's kind of a vibrational or just a light about the thing at that point. Now, you and I have talked about the theory of making it, and there's the Ormus theory, and I, I still lean towards the, the interferometry. If you've got a crystalline uh, structure, it acts as a phase step-down trap. And these super light particles, 10 to the 16th power, you know, at, at C squared velocities, go through everything except when they hit that molten crystalline phase step down trap. And at that point, they just create out of nothing. That's my theory after the work. So, uh, you know, you and I can go on for that for the next 20, yeah. 10, 20 years. Well, uh, we could spend the whole afternoon just talking about the theory of making gold from quartz or glass and stuff like this. But the point is, it's in what well, I use quartz, I use a magnetite, I use hematite, I use a rhodonite, 
every crystal structure I've ever played with and put in the microwave, I break it open and I get a, I get a precious metal out of it. I think these metals, let me see, I don't have my crystal structures, but let me pull something down from up here. I have some. Gosh, isn't this exciting? Learning yeah. how to make gold. <laughs> Look at this area, you see me? Here's a, here's a, 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 a octahedron. But, and here is a, uh, a can you give, uh, give him full Where? screen there, Crystal? Yeah. What it is, we have atoms at the corners of all these things, but in the center, each of these things radiate a, a field of energy. And so in the center, we have a little pocket where all those energy fields come together. And those pockets inside of this shape or that shape, no matter this, any crystal shape you have, they, they form an energy nest which favors different materials. In my this material is materials that lost their electrons so they have a positive charge inside their floating around nucleus and that just fits inside of these guys in here and if i find the right size nest it fits perfectly so i think we should look at every crystal structure there are and i've only looked at two or three we would find metal monatomic gold or platinum or platinum any one of those 13 orbits with you captured inside of these crystal structures and if i had time and money or was younger I'd go through all the crystal structures there are, run them through my microwave and find out how we keep these precious elements out of there and, and find out exactly, you know, instead of mining them out of the ground, just take scrap material that we have, open them up and find the metals, these precious elements in there. Uh, you know, I, I live here in Wilmington now. It's a beach area. We had a beach, we have a beach a quarter, a mile long, I mean, wide at spots and, and 10 to 15 miles long. That's all quartz, it's all full of, 8% of that stuff is gold. You know, in the Bible, they say in the later days, they'll, they'll have so much, the streets will be made of gold. Well, they're made of gold now because there isn't any kind of cement or anything, don't have quartz in it now, and quartz is all, quartz contains gold. So we have a lot of experience to keep, Experiments they keep doing to get all those precious metals out of them. And to me, rhodium or iridium are such wonderful materials. You can make a bridge out of that stuff and it'll never rust. But the strength of, of iridium uh, you know, and rhodium are very strong and very chemically in their materials. They'll never degrade or fall apart and everything. We have some of the best in the future. We'll make stuff that won't fall apart or degrade. You know, like you go in England, you see these old houses that are made of bricks and cement that are millions of years old. But we make things here out of iron and stuff like this. They, they start corroding and falling apart in no time. But we got materials we can make them out of in the future. Rhodium and iridium instead of iron and steel, that will never fall apart either. Uh, and so we have a, a lot more experience around I mean, we could do if we had time and money to do this. Instead of spending money making bombs and stuff, we could use these for peaceful applications, make things that just will never fall apart, and they'll, they'll be permanent. And I think that's probably the future that we have to do is make things that will last forever and not fall apart. And a lot of it is using this new technology of opening the structures up and pulling these inert, 13 inert elements called ormus, <coughs> rhodium, radium, platinum, palladium, all that kind of stuff. They're very good materials to work with. I mean, you know, I wish I could find somebody with nothing but time and money and young people to work with me on developing this metal processing company. But, uh, but at least I discovered the thing and it's there and someone wants to play with it. There'll, there'll be no end to, to finding what, what's going on and, and getting good stuff out of it. John, and that is where the, the solution coin, the cryptocurrency coin issuance comes in. Um, this group here is, is in the core of our solution coin uh, working group. And likely before the falls out, we will have that coin issued. And there will be extensive resources from the solution coin there will be an airdrop free coin for the, all the solution-minded communities, communities oh, wow. like this one. 
people yeah. where there's invention work going on. We'll support all of those solutions with the solution coin. So it's not very far ahead where we will have the ability to raise the resources needed for these special projects. And also, you know, there's the MEG, uh, the MEG device. Uh, that device is on our priority list for solutions. That thing has got to go out and, and be enjoyed and shared with the rest of the world. So there's a lot coming down the pipe and it's coming very quickly. Fall is only just, uh, you know, three, three, four weeks away here. Yeah. And we're going to see this solution coin uh, come together. Wow, that's very great, Martin. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> I don't know whether we should just be keeping talking about that, but you know, uh, when I think we need we need what I call a plan B. You know, in the long run, everything's made and runs on electricity, and electricity is going to fail. The whole system. The grid work is old, and, and the, the the material and stuff that they use, and, and we can't have any food on our table without electricity because electricity needs to pump the diesel that runs the trucks, and so so they we're so so tied up into the fact that we need electrical energy just to run our whole life cycle. You think the government should have a master plan B? What do they do if electricity fails? You got nothing. And this is where I want to get into this so-called magnetricity. A magnetic monopole has 10 billion electron volts. <clears throat> we don't need an awful lot of magnetic monopoles to run uh, the power systems and everything. That's my next thing I was working on, magnetic energy and magnetricity. We've got to develop a source of energy that's independent of electricity because electricity is not going to hold up. We have a a comet come by, or uh, earth changes, or, or a, a eruption in, in the earth, and stuff like that. All kinds of changes can come by from space and earth, and we can lose all our electricity, and we'll be out of luck, but we should have a plan B to work on to do this stuff. I'm working on that now, as uh, to develop techniques for collecting this magnetic energy. And I, I can't get into too much of the detail of how I'm doing it right now because I don't want to give away the, the secret. But one thing I do know is the magnetricity, magnetic monopole travels 10 billion times faster than the speed of light. And it it runs, you want an electrical conductor for electric, electricity, for electric monopole, you need a copper, you need an electrical conductor surrounded by an insulator. You want a conductor for magnetic monopoles, you use just the opposite. Use an insulator material, which is a magnetic, all insulators are conductors of magnetic energy. And you want to surround that with a conductor like a, a copper coated plastic fishing line would be perfect wire for making magnetic monopole instruments, you know, transformers and coils and all kinds of things like that. It's just the opposite of electrical transmission, the magnetic transmission. <coughs> <clears throat> and people don't and, the, and those fishing lines could be coated with gold too. Oh, that's what it is. You take a fishing line, you coat it with gold or silver, and so you got electrically conductor on the outside of an in electrical insulator, and you got wires and things you need. Everything they did in, 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 in value in coming from the time Benjamin Franklin flew the kite and showed the spark go down there, and they started first thing they started making is is little. Uh, uh, condensers and, and, and things like this. Then they got into transformers and into the coils and the tank circuits and then eventually radio came along and television. We could go through the whole series that they would electricity in magnetricity. And we, we probably would took 400 years for electricity to develop. We could take two, probably three or four years. We could do it with magnetricity. And you know, for example, if we make a radio that runs on magnetricity, Right now, we use a regular radio set to the nearest star, eight light years out, eight light years back, 16, light, 16 years to make a round trip. At the speed of super light with magnetricity, two and a half milliseconds, that's all it takes. A typical galaxy that, you know, that runs across the 100,000 light years spiral of the galaxy with 400 billion stars, it's 100,000 light years from one side to the other. It's the speed of super light and magnetricity. It's two and a half minutes. 
so uh, we can make radios and things like that when we do space traveling. You're going to be able to talk to one guy from one side of the galaxy to the other. Instead of 100,000 years round trip, it's two and a half milliseconds, uh, two and a half minutes or something like that, much shorter. So at least this idea of working with magnetricity, magnetic energy, gives the whole universe to us. Now, now we can travel the whole universe. Or we got we don't have to take any energy with us because we live in a sea of energy that's just full of this stuff. About 10 or 15 years ago, they took the Hubble telescope and pointed it at, at the, the darkest space they could find in skies. But very tiny little dark spot. They took a picture for eight hours and blew it up to a full-size page. They counted 10,000 galaxies in that one little thing which acted a quarter of an arc second. You go from arc seconds to 60 arc seconds to 60 minutes to 360 degrees. By the time you expand it to the whole universe, we find out that there are 400 billion galaxies to a tri the trillion galaxies out there, each with 400 billion stars. So there's plenty of stuff out there for us to go to and places to go. We have, fortunately, with the magneticity and magnetic energy, we could travel the whole universe. Before it was, you know, well, first we had the sound barrier, and then we had- I, the I hope you I folks are taking notes here because this is as good as it gets. <laughs> God bless you, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, but we, you know, let me tell you this story. You get an idea of where we're all coming from on this. It was in the third grade and sister, Sister Loretta was the principal of our school. We was teaching. We were Crystal, teaching can you geography. make his uh, screen large? Yeah, we were teaching <laughs> geography. We were talking, teaching uh, exploration, how the Columbus and Magellan and all these guys travel all around the world. And these guys were all explorers. After three weeks of that, summer, I was so excited. I said, gee, sister, I want to become an explorer when I grow up. I want to become an explorer. She said, sorry, John, everything has been explored already. It shocked me so much. I cried for three days straight. My hopes were so high. I just wanted to go out and explore and learn new things. Oh. And, and it was, my parents couldn't say, what's wrong with you, John? What's wrong? I said, they took my job away. But later on, I finally grew into it. By the time I was in the sixth, third grade, I was drawing pictures of rocket ships in the seventh grade, writing essays on going to the moon. Uh, you know, I've been a space cadet right from the start. Now we have stuff that allow us to become a space cadet. We can, we have the energy to do that. It's all there. It's it's easy as you know, dark and light. You know, electricity, magnetism. You know, we have no limit now. As I said in my paper, the world is ours now because we have the energy and we have the power to do that now. And we we're going to be able to do that. And. and uh, I, I wrote a couple of things on this. I, I want to get, I'm trying to write a book, but I got about 10 or 15 papers I wrote on super light and magnetricity and zero point energy and all that stuff. And, and I got to put it all together so it'll be available for someone to pick up the ball and run. <clears throat> this whole thing maybe you've been hearing about lately called zero point energy. Well, let me explain what zero point energy is. I said that. They took that Hubble telescope and they pointed it out there and they counted that galaxy. They counted 400 billion galaxies there. I'm gonna to try to bring my little camera over and show you something, what comes out of those galaxies. Hold on. Is there any way to increase the screen size for John there? Uh, it's on your own setting. Uh, yeah, it's on your own setting, Martin. It's all of us are having screen size, I think. Yeah, I'm having the biggest screen size. I'll figure it out. I'll catch up. <laughs> see if you can see this. What am I head set on now? If you look at this picture here, that's the one that they took a Hubble telescope and they counted 10,000 of these galaxies here. And if you look at them really close, you'll find that every one of these galaxies have jets of energy coming out of them, like this here. They're coming out of, the, out of all of these things here. So you have, 
a trillion sources of super light. That's what those jets are. That's the magnetic and that's magnetic magnetic monopole. And that's magnetricity. That's you know, regular light is electromagnetic energy. This is magnetoelectric. So if you take Maxwell's equation and solve it with positive numbers, you get electromagnetic energy travel at the speed of light. But if you put take Maxwell's equation, put negative numbers in it, so you, it it comes out so you have to square both sides of the equation. You got c squared equals one over ten to the ninth to the twentieth power. It it says that we have an infinite source of energy, and it's mostly it's magnetoelectric instead of electromagnetic energy. See, it's a regular energy. You see, you got a large electrical component, a small magnetic component. So it's electromagnetic. The magnetricity is a large magnetic component, or a small electrical component. Well, I used to think the difference might have been ten to one or something. Like that. It's one times not one over nine times ten to the twentieth difference amount of energy was from magnetic to electric. Did we do lose something here? We lost you, uh, Crystal. Uh, my thing. But the point is, is what is mostly magnetic, it's mostly magnetic, very little electricity, mostly electrical, mostly electrical, very little magnetic energy to make the whole electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, so, uh, and, and that for the first time uh, gives us a symmetry in this physics and science, right. electromagnetic and then now the magnetoelectric. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Uh, we have a whole spectrum. We we know in electromagnetic, you also uh, cosmic rays or radio waves, or X rays, all different lengths, of wavelengths. We have to. There's going to be a whole spectrum of magnetoelectric energy we have to learn about. Also, here's my here's my spectrum here. Can I get it out of here? Uh, one of the the accompanying benefits of the magnetic electric is its health uh, rejuvenative effects. You know, that was an unforeseen benefit, but it's a huge part of this side of this symmetry in physics and science. I'm, I'm holding this at my, uh, at, a, at my spectrum here, which shows your wavelength versus uh, all these. If this is the electromagnetic spectrum, you know, from from ultraviolet, low frequency, all the way up to X-rays and gamma rays, ultraviolet and gamma rays. The whole thing is going to be, it's going to be a whole spectrum based on, on magnetoelectric energy too, which we have to get into and develop understanding of that. Very little work has been done. Are you guys hearing me okay? No, it's a bit low on the volume. It's a bit low. Move the mic back closer if you can, John. Thanks. Is it better now? It slipped under my chin. <laughs> so, uh, so my well, let's just get a piece of tape and tape it to your nose, John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, for 40 years, I did a lot of work at growing crystals. You know, uh, with the sapphire, silicon carbide, whisker crystals, and all kinds of stuff. And And then for about 10 years, I did a lot of work uh, with the gold processing and things like this. But now, uh, if I get a chance to get, get my act back together, I'm going to work with magnetricity, try to develop this method of making magnetic monopoles, I mean, transferring magnetic monopoles and do things like that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So we can make this energy more available for everyone. Well, I'll, I'll, well, on that on that note, uh, yeah. I'll I'll delve a bit into some of the work John and I have been playing with the last couple of years, is redesigning uh, the Meg device, the Meg, um, yeah, motionless Maybe. electric Maybe. generator from Colonel Tom Bearden. Yeah. Now John has a, a lengthy history with the Bearden camp, if you would. Now. I've known Tom Bearden for many, many years. You know, we were speakers at many conferences together. So we had, you know, a fair amount of green room time, you know, where as speakers, you'd sit on panels and stuff like that. So I got to know the big fella and he's a big man, like about six foot seven. And uh, 
uh, Bearden always lost me in what he would go into his rant about esoteric mathematics, okay, and, and then zero point. And I always was conflicted in my conversations with Bearden about zero point definition and reality versus what the alchemists of old always called the aether. And I, I always intuitively said the aether was what, and I guess John calls that super light, but yeah, super the light aether, the ether. Yeah, the aether, the aether is, zero point that's, energy. The, that's the juice and you know, the, 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 you know, the fruit of what's called life. That's the juice. And, and I was saying that one of the, the greatest benef benefits that accompanies, you know, the magnetic electrics side of that symmetry in science and physics is the, is the wellness and the rejuvenation and the healing benefits of the magnetricity. Okay. It's very healing for our, for our life forms and biogenetics. And so, you know, our challenges and stuff can be readily met when we start utilizing this new knowledge and and it's a huge a huge um step for the consciousness domain of humanity you know we went from 3d you know horse-drawn uh reality uh to you know space technology and uh, all kinds of you know, modern conveniences and electronics, all of the rest of that. Okay, but now we're gonna approach uh, beyond the quantum into the dimensional, okay? You know, we're in an infinite relationship with reality in this, you know, very limited space. But if we can start getting our pituitary gland, our pineal glands working and stuff like that, then we're at the bandwidth where all of these technologies will make a lot of sense. And that okay. is when Don Estes comes in with his spiritual mm -hmm. signs. Yeah. So we need that to balance up, Martin. Right. Martin, I need to say this. Okay. I mean, um, John is such uh, like a walking dictionary of... Uh, all these technologies and he's got he's got so much to share and i certainly would like uh john to come back to share more with us well uh, i we... want i want john to know that he's part of this family we've oh, welcomed him yeah. okay oh. he's solution minded all the way you know certainly uh, i've already that's... That's the beauty of this man, and he does yeah. have a, a wealth of contributions, and and our coin will start to bring him the resources and the people. Okay, yeah. I don't want John doing all this drudgery lab work. You know, let's put 10 graduate students to work, you know, yeah, stuff I like agree. that, you know. That's where it should be. And <laughs> yeah, and then let's, let's, let's do science, you know. Yeah. Science has been corrupted as bad as any other. You know, you talk about the corruption in economics and banking and fiat currency, all of that crap. You know, chemtrails, it goes on and on and on and on, eugenics and blah, blah, blah. You got to at one point just say, okay, all of that stuff is here and it's going on in the rest of the world, but it's not going on in our world. Okay, we have our own little community and that's where we end up in grand cash. You know, and we talked about these challenges, you know, uh, Abraham said in one of her videos the other day I watched, all you have to do to get the source energy is go pet your dog. Okay, mm -hmm. you look at a dog's eyes and the love from your dog, you know, you're at source energy. Mm -hmm. And if you're at source energy, your dreams are coming to you. How much of that can you stand? So that's where, that's where the work is. And that's what's going to be special about this community. We're going to do that in unity and coherence. Certainly. And Martin, I would love to share the video that you did so professionally done on uh, uh, the Blue Energy Venture with, uh, with John. Okay, can I share screen now? Because you really... Are showing the people how you make gold from uh, beer, brown beer bottles. <laughs> okay, you can you can show that one, and you can also show the tidal bridge uh, video you. on the, Vimeo. The tidal bridge we, we had shown that before in the uh, the your speaking time in I, the past. I wanted I wanted John to see it. So um, 
Okay, so this is what Martin made uh, when he was partnering with uh, John to make gold from glass beer bottles. We're not, we're not making it from the glass. We're getting it. It's in the glass to start with. We're not, we're, it's not alchemy. We're not converting one metal. Into Hang on another. a minute. That is a... There is something in the background. Is somebody speaking as well? Can you see? Can you see the screen? I don't see. Yeah, I can see the screen. Yeah, yeah somebody's see, speaking I, in the background, so I don't know what's running at the same time as well. John, mic. mute your mic for a second, John. Yeah. Mute your mic for a second, John. I'm not getting any sound. No. You're not getting the sound? Is anybody else getting the sound? No. I'm no. not. You no don't hear the sound, Patrick? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think this is where YouTube is better because YouTube's sound goes through. This one doesn't. Well, I'll, I'll go through it very quickly anyway because there's no sound. Showing how Martin was making gold using John's technology. Michael, yeah. That's pretty hot. Uh, uh, Martin, would you like degrees. would you like to make a commentary here because they can't hear the video? Yeah, here's 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 my friend uh, Joseph Tills, another alchemist. He's been out he's been an out of the closet alchemist for quite a while, and uh, he's assisting me here. And there he's pour, pouring molten uh, glass and uh, magnetite and a few other little tincture materials into a conical cast mold. And uh, from there, we'll uh, reduce it with um, flux material and make a, uh, an assay bead. Okay, there's the lead button. And he's hammering that now. And now we're doing the assay and you can see the capels there, the assay capels. And there you see uh, the gold that we created in an hour and a half in the lab. Um, and it's like 750 micron bead of gold. And here's some pictures there I showed of some other stuff that John had done. But, but we know how to, the, well, all we're doing is biomimic mimicry. Okay. And, and John was, uh, the brilliance of John is that data is sacrosanct to him, okay? And you've got theory and all the noise and all the stuff, you know, big bang, blah, blah, blah. And, and John stays with the facts. And, and that's what distinguishes, you know, the great scientists uh, in the John Maluskis is, is they stay with the facts and the facts speak for themselves. And in this case, uh, what John has done is he has observed how nature creates gold. And like he said, there's enough gold in the beach to pave the streets. Okay, he's right. Okay, so it, how does nature uh, make the, you know, the bimetallic metals and, you know, the stuff that you weigh on a, you know, a, a, a scale? Uh, that, that stuff comes after energy frequency encoding has occurred. So yes, you can use technologies uh, like, like the microwave. I think plasma has got a lot more uh, potential for these sort of things. But even sure. just finding the metal with those uh, blinders removed from your scaled eyes, okay, you can find out where nature's got these materials in huge abundance and then go after that and finish the metal's expression into diadomic, you know, precious metal bars. Okay, so that's the opportunity with this. And the solution coin, uh, you know, all of these things can come out as a consequence of launching our solution coin. And these solution-minded members bring us that coherence 
okay? It was the lack of the coherence that killed the Nikola Teslas. It was the lack of the coherence that stopped the John Keeley's work, you know, and all these others. And and you, you get a lot of noise in this space, you know, even, you know, even uh, Colonel Tom Bearden, you know, in the end, I think that was you know, 30 years of noise. Uh, he wouldn't even hear John out when John, John told him what was required to fix his technology, you know. So his ego was bigger than, you know, his need to fix his junk. <laughs> but, you know, John's got the junk fixed up, you know. And, and we've got our own uh, Bearden device, you know, 2.0 here. And I see 10, 20 kilowatts coming out of this thing in a handheld size. That makes a difference to everybody. Everybody. Sorry to ramble on here, folks. No, no, that's good, good, Martin. I, uh, uh, on Bearden's work, I about 20 years ago, when Bearden was first getting started, he had the idea of trying to separate electrical from magnetic energy. You know, when electrons flow, it's electromagnetic energy. It's, along with electrons, you get magnetic molecules, and along with magnetic energy, you got electrical energy. They had this idea of trying to make a wire that would separate the magnetic monopoles from them. So he called me up because he knew I was a metallurgist and started working with me. I said, yeah, I, I can make you a silver wire that will stop the magnetic. Well, the idea was to put particles of magnetite into silver. So when you roll it out, as it's conducting down the silver rod, it stops and hits a piece of magnetite. So that captures the magnetic energy as it's going by. And so we would sub-filter out the magnetic energy along the line of that thing. And so we talked about it quite a bit, and he was going to help me. And I made a couple of wires for him, but he never got a chance to test them. I said, gee, for God's sakes, you know, this could th prove your theory. But I don't know, he got off on another kick at that time and lost the whole thing. But well, I hope this Smithsonian Institute just recorded that last 45 seconds because that's <laughs> the goods, folks. Right. Yeah. So, okay, I'll hand the microphone over to you because time's running on a bit. Um, we have to wrap up the meeting. I'll have to hand over to the co-chair, Mr. James Ring. Yeah, well, I was wondering if we open the floor to questions. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, well, I have a question. Um, it, how does this uh, this new uh, well this new technology splitting the atoms and so on uh, out this alchemical process how does that compare to like carbon nanotubes is that similar or is that something that has to be manufactured maybe like through nanotechnology? Yeah, asking who you asking that question? John, I, I I'm not working with nanotubes. How's what compare it? I mean the microwave work to the nanotubes? I don't well, know. like the the advanced. I don't understand your question. Yeah, so like these advanced materials, um, uh, is, they extract the, the carbon nanotubes in the same process, similar to what you're doing? Yeah, well, I, I think the, the complete, in carbon nanotubes are, is something different than what we were doing. We're, we're, we're taking, the gold is already in the quartz. It's in the quartz, this is in the glass, which is in the beer box and stuff. All we're doing is breaking down and separating the structure that's surrounding the gold in the microwave. So, uh, see, we, if you take plain quartz and try to put it in a furnace and heat it and melt it, we were in the rocket engine business. They took, they used quartz for nose cones on the rocket engines because once you melt it, you melt course gold around three to 4,000 degrees centigrade, not gold, I'm melting quartz and it becomes a liquid. Well, that liquid at 3,000 degrees centigrade under a jet of, of ultrasonic jets for the nose cone, still is like taking honey out of the refrigerator and trying to pour it. The viscosity of molten quartz is so high that it just doesn't flow, it doesn't go anywhere. So it's hard to break it apart to get the gold out of the quartz because it's so thick and hard to move it. What happens when you put it in the microwave? And of course, if you put it in when the quartz is in combined with the glass and the beer bottle, they use lime and silica to lower the viscosity of the quartz. 
Well, yeah. that's where that's where the secret of the borax comes in, John. Yeah, yeah. But low is the flux of density, the, the viscosity. But then you, the the stirring when you melt, if you take a plain glass and put it in a furnace, you heat it up, it comes out. It's just hot. It doesn't do anything. Put it in the microwave. It stirs it and stirs it and twists. You pull it out. It's still moving around and it separates it and breaks it up. And and so that allows the the quartz to be the glass that be pulled free from the quartz crystal itself, then the crystal opens up and the monatomic gold is in there. And if you put something else, they, the particles to combine, they combine and get together, uh, they, they form little white particles of pure monatomic gold. And then if you heat them enough, you can add a, in the microwave, that's what the microwave does. It adds electrons to the monatomic gold and they become metallic instead of non-metallic. And that's why we get the gold in the microwave. It breaks the material up, frees electrons. What we did Well, I think, I think the plasma furnaces, John, is a yeah, way forward from thing. this from this point. Well, not only that, you can get the ambient uh, magnetronic fields and densities, all of that stuff tuned, oh, sure. to, the, tuned to the particular metal, okay? You could, so, you could, you can. Yeah, yeah, you, you can do that too. We, we, I never had a chance to get that far in my lab. It's so, always better one room space. Yeah, John, I was wondering, uh, what about transmutation of elements? Can you combine two different minerals and get something else, or is that something? Totally well, I didn't do any transmutation. That's what they call alchemy. Alchemy is taking lead and making gold out of it. So, well, we're going into the beer bottle. The gold's already in there as single atoms. All you're doing is combining and getting a bunch of atoms together and adding electrons and making metal. They're in there as non-metallic atoms. And, then, and and I and I, I think if we step back, okay, and and just appreciate um, alchemists, modern day alchemy, physics, and John Maluski, okay, you you've got to look at at uh, the context, and you've got to look at all of this as just encoded energy, okay, information encoded in amph in the energy domain. We're talking back in dimensionality, quantum mechanics, all of that, dimensionality. Okay, what you're looking at in that crucible is just a matrix, just like the movie, The Matrix. It's just encoded energy in a dimensional matrix. Magnetronics, yes. Magno magnetricity, yes. Okay, but when you whistle at that element's frequency, every elemental dog will come to its whistle. It just shows up, okay? I don't think it's in the glass. John says it's in the glass. He may be right, I don't know. But it really no, doesn't I, I matter. The point, the point is, is it, it's expressed, you know, expressed I, uh, hugely richly. I think every crystal structure has an energy field inside of it that will capture gold, platinum, plated, one of the raw elements, all the orange atoms are in there because they're in the air. I made gold out of water. I made gold out of air. We got gold out of solid material. Everything you eat, drink, and drink, eat, drink, or walk on contains gold in monatomic form. It's in the in the asphalt of the floor. It's in the air you breathe. It's in the water you drink. And, and, and but. but so it's already there as monatomic gold. All we have to do is get in a place where we could add electrons to it and make metallic, make it metal. And so Hudson says six to eight percent of the Earth's surface is monatomic gold or platinum, or most mostly gold of all the elements. But there's thirteen of them that all could be there. Right. Hey, John, can you to move your mic up closer to your mouth? Oh, you're not hearing it. Okay. Thank you. I got to bend it up. Is okay. that working better now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, just. I'm gonna try to reach up and grab a, a chart for you for one minute. James, I you want to say something, James? Go on. You're the coach, eh? No, no. I, I think we're ready to move on. Yeah. Open to the floor. <laughs> uh, let John uh, share this next treasure with us here. He's going to dig yeah, up I'm something. Here. something his, his office is full of treasure. You know, when you're down there, you can see all kinds of fun stuff. Look at this, thing. this is part of the periodic table. This here 
is the inert gases. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. Over on this side are all the 13 monatomic elements of the, the new orbit elements. And this is where they belong in the periodic table. The periodic table should be amended to add additional inert elements. You got your neon, and between neon and argon, you got ormus, cobalt, nickel, and copper. Now, in argon gas and krypton gas, between those two gases, you got you got ormus, rhodium, iridium, palladium, and gold, and silver. And down here between krypton and xenon, am I getting it right here? Is is rhenium, osmium, iridium, platinum, gold, and mercury. So these 13 elements all belong in a periodic table. They belong over here where the inert elements are, but they're not in there. We, we should add, the periodic table should be amended to have these 13 elements added. The, on the inert gas side, the rest of the whole periodic table, mm. which you'll see way up here. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's up there. That, that's your 94 elements all along in there. But at the far end, that's where this should take on and add this stuff here, you know. This is a Nobel Prize too, if they accept but I'm not a chemist, so I can't add to the chemist, write up anything for a chemist. Because that's a problem with modern science and literature. Unless you're a chemist, you don't write in the chemical magazine. Unless you're alchemist, if you're, unless you're an astronomer, you can't write something about astronomy. If you're, unless you're uh, a physicist, you can't write in physics. Oh, Fres, Fres, you got the same chart, Fres, that uh, John has got? Don't hear me, dude. What? Fres, yes. Fres, though, has got the same chart that you got, John. Fres, you want to show yours? I couldn't find mine that quick enough for today's meeting. I'm sorry. Oh, it's well, okay. It's Go on then, John. John. Have you yeah. seen Bill Schneider's uh, element periodic table? Yeah. Periodic table Bill Schneider, where he shows all the alien elements that are not even yeah. listed. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Oh, yeah, the elements, yeah. Well, there's a lot more to it, but I'm saying right now, but this is the typical periodic table here with the, what they say, the 94, 96 elements. But over here is what they don't show on the periodic table is these wow. extra 13 elements over here. And uh, so the whole thing should be modified to put this end over here. This part of the table here. This part has to be added to it. All of these guys here. Mm. To be added to the periodic table. And those are all the Ormus elements. The elements, they're not the same. same. Ormus gold is not the same as metallic gold that you find over here. Because it has less electrons and has a different property. So it's actually as a different element. And it should be treated as such. And so the periodic table should be revised to include these other elements here, over here. And that's what I would suggest in life is to get done, but I have to get somebody who's a master in chemistry. We'll get, we'll get the people lined up to do that work, John. Uh, Crystal, uh, I don't know how much time we've got left. We here. don't have any time left now, so we got but, but, to really John, move on. But John, I'd like to uh, end this uh, yeah. by saying what a tr what a, a pleasure it has been for me to share you with this extraordinary group of people. Oh, thank you very much. And oh. and uh, we hope that you continue your participation in this. Uh, you overwhelmed us today with your knowledge and breadth of. <laughs> vision and all the rest of that and uh, but it was the lack of coherence that defeated the likes of the John Keeley the Victor Schauberger the Nikola Tesla okay what is unique and what the feasting and the solution coin brings us is a coherence that can't be stopped where Keeley Tesla and and uh, Schauberger were stopped. Maluski now with this coherence cannot be stopped. So welcome aboard, John. Thank John, you, welcome aboard. Uh, we we love what you do, and we would like to book you for not the next one because we've already got Don Estes. Hopefully, he recovers uh, quick enough. Yeah, and then we've got we've got. Um, 
uh, we've got another speaker as well, whom we just firmed up. <laughs> so uh, uh, he's not here now. Okay, so uh, we would like you to come back September. Uh, no, no, September, November, October. October. Would you be able to avail yourself in October? It's still a long way yet. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so you got so much to share, and we are all ears and eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm 51. So how oh, many years is that now? My PA, I, I graduated from another tape, tape that mic to your nose there, John. Huh? Tape that microphone to your nose. Okay, okay. You're not <laughs> hearing it. Okay. We are hearing it. You're fine. Just speak louder. Uh, I love you, sweetheart. Oh. And, and by the way, if you haven't noticed, she's a very pretty girl, too, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We love you, too, John. As well, I said, you, 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 you caught her, or you came on just after we caught her combing her hair. So she, <laughs> uh, she, she freshened herself up for us. No, but, you know, Crystal, Crystal has an amazing energy and a light. And, and the oh, things that she you. does in, in the course of her life, as she calls service, is just something to be commended and okay so let's all work together in this harmonics and resonance and unity thank you thank you very much i think we got to don't go away yet john because uh our co-chair has yet to open to the floor for question and answers and if you if you like james you want to go around the table yeah i've already asked if anybody has any questions if anyone else has any questions go ahead and jump in Press. I'm sure you have some questions. I'm sure Patrick has well, got some questions. I'm sitting here watching Pontus, and, and both of us are smiling because it resonates in some of the stuff that we've been working on. And hey. it, it's very exciting because we're right at the that cutting edge. It's like we're so close, but yet we can't quite see it. And some of the stuff that we look at in the electronics and the electromagnetic is when we run electricity through a transformer, it's got an iron core in it. And it it works well on the first time, but you run it through the second one and you don't get the same results from each of the other uh, step up or step down transformers because you've stripped away part of that magnetic portion of the circuit. And so this is that I'm, I'm going to share, I'm up share, there I'm going, share, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to share a secret there from uh, John. Uh, when you start looking at the redesign of the magnet magnetricity transformer, okay, your transformer is is a whole different. It's a whole different device when you look at uh, the potential for magnetic flux dynamic fluids, okay, uh, magnetic the, the, you know dynamic de deluxe fluids. That's a whole different transformer. So I'm going to switch over. Pontus, if you've got a question, go right ahead. I'm going to back out here. You've been working with Fres along with Douglas Edwards, right? Are you are you in Douglas yeah. Edwards workshop working on this stuff? Yes, uh, I mean. something like it, but uh, uh, you're still in uh, the electrical uh, mode. But uh, I think uh, John Malivsky should uh, talk to uh, Douglas. Oh, cool. That is good. We are all in the family. All right. Yeah, and I yeah. must, I must um, pat uh, Pontus on the back. Thank you so much, bro, for holding the uh, Physic Facebook so well. I mean, Pontus has been consistently posting loads and loads of uh, technology breakthrough stuff on uh, Physics Facebook page. So please join and uh, friend uh, Physic Facebook page. and. Uh, do a like on our pages each time Pontus posts something, please, because that is going to help us get more attention. Thank you. Pontus, any more you want to say and share with uh, the workshop that you've been attending with uh, Douglas Edwards? How is it progressing? We are progressing slowly and uh, uh, Lots of people in the group that uh, have a little knowledge of electrical stuff, so uh, it takes time. Mm -hmm. But we will get them. Yeah. Don't forget to share some breakthroughs if you found some there. <laughs> yeah. I win. Wonderful. 
Right. So if we go around the table, James, uh, do you want to call Le upon Elizabeth, Kitchen Abrina? Elizabeth, uh, we haven't heard from you today. How's oh, your stuff going? Elizabeth has left. Uh, she has okay. said because uh, I think uh, in Europe it's quite late now and it's bedtime for Fontas as well because uh, it's uh, one hour ahead of my time. So if it's 9.30 now, there will be 10.30 in the evening. So that's why we have to wrap up the meeting quickly. All right, and besides, we can't have too long a video recording because people don't have that attention span. Yeah. Well, this has been a lot of fun for me. And uh, okay. again, John, this is a family that uh, you are loved and acknowledged and, and respected for your contribution in the past, present, and also the future. And let's talk about those longevity technologies. John and I got a longevity technology going on uh, conversation, and it's awesome. Awesome. Right. I, I want I want to I want to share something that if you are googling you want to know more about what this distinguished gentleman had done and brought forth to humanity's betterment just search his name John Maluski on uh, uh, Google and you will see all his YouTubes there and if you watch the YouTubes you love him he is so lovable <laughs> with his as I said childlike exuberance in in uh, discussing his work and uh, sharing what he has done. It's so wonderful to watch that. Thank you, John. Also, if you go to you go to Google, you get 11 pages of the additional websites and patents and publications and stuff on there. Oh, yes. So uh, if 11 you... pages to cover all my publications and patents. Exactly. And uh, we can see what you have been up to all these years. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is mainly the gold thing. Yeah. All right. Sweetheart, do you dance? If you dance, if I ever meet you, I dance with you. Oh, I dance. I am a very I enthusiastic dancer. I do 20 different dances. She's ten, a ballerina. 10 different ballroom dances, ballroom and Latin. And, uh, oh, I'd love and the ballroom. Rest. Oh, I, I could waltz great. with you, John. I dance well. I love the Venice waltz. Crystal yeah. is a princess. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Ron. All right. <laughs> okay, let's go around the table. Uh, James, would you allow me to do the round the table? Okay, so um, Ron, you got anything that you want to say? Unfinished I was, business here? I was just going to say something relevant to uh, someone you know about, uh, Gerard Morin. He, uh, he's working on his uh, three phase sign generator. And he's still got uh, problems with the uh, controller situation, but uh, he's he's coming along. He had he had a piece of equipment uh, delivered, damaged, and uh, so uh, he's uh, slowly but surely he he's he's had problems with. Uh, and he said he said eventually uh, when he gets things uh, up to snuff, he's going to have to make a trip to China to uh, to actually oversee. Uh, what's going on with these uh, different controllers that he's uh, having them build for him. Ron, would I leave it to you to invite Gerard Maureen to speak at Physique? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's ready to right now. Um, he will be. He will be once he has once he has the controllers uh, working properly. Well, you have Physics letterhead to invite him because you are in the uh, executive council. Okay. Right, on behalf of Physic. Right, uh, uh, Bo, Bo C, would you want to say anything before we close the meeting? Bo, I'm unmuting you. Uh, you have been unmuted, Bo. Do you want to say anything? Okay, then we move on to Julian. Julian, do you want to say yeah. anything? Yeah, I have a couple. Um... Sure. couple questions um i think one thing was that but i want to get um how could we follow up more about the uh solution coin project you're working on martin martin a solution coin oh marco can answer that question as well marco are you here i've jump unmuted in, marco. you i'll 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 hit it as well marco jump in Marco, unmute yourself. Hello? 
Yeah, we can hear you. Ma oh, let me let me say something about Marco. Why I invited him to answer that question. Marco mm. is the scientist uh, the, who had invented the first cryptocurrency in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. So here he is, and he's a very yeah, humble man because he's way that's before that's Satoshi. A, it's it's a bold statement, but uh, yeah, it can be verified. Um, <laughs> there's a little bit of a sword pass. Actually, the first peer-to-peer -peer stock market as well. But uh, we're yeah we're yeah we are working on the project. Um, <laughs> sorry, it kind of caught me off guard here. What would you like to know about it? Um, I was just you know I've been working on some things myself to just kind of interested in some independent prosperity projects and such. So um, I just was looking to just kind of follow what you guys were doing a little bit more in depth. Well, we're gonna do um, an indigo um somewhere towards the end of this month okay? okay and that could go to five mil okay uh depending on all and all of us are required to promote uh that indico and reach out and push that as as far as we possibly can so from that day from that point forward depending on how extensive that raise goes on indico we can we can systematically put together our free coin airdrop our solution minded engineered consciousness domain okay we're going to put 250,000 people into that and they're people just like you and i okay equally passionate about betterment of humanity equally passionate about community equally passionate about integrity equally passionate about source connectedness equally passionate about the purpose of life why we came here and why we might spend more than a minute or two of the day in considering those questions you know so yeah. the solution coin when we finally get to that okay we'll have a consciousness engineered domain with those 250,000 people that we will find we will all source them out okay they're all they're all great people. They're just people like us. They've been, and they've been, they've been struggling all their lives to do what we all want to do. Okay. Yeah. So we'll bring them into this engineered consciousness domain, and then we will do the ICO. Now, our ICO, it's, you know, when you talk about Mark's background, you know, in the early days of even conceiving all of this bullshit crap called crypto and blockchain and all the rest of that and it's just a pile of crap but but the the whole thing is is that it's easy to design a first tier coin given the th two or three thousand uh, uh examples that have all just you know been flawed to shit okay so it's easy to design a first tier coin but what will distinguish this solution coin from all the others is its coherency and unity engineered consciousness domain our people will not be denied anymore we know together in this community the schauberger the teslas the maluskis we know they all made the contributions and we've been denied those contributions we will not be denied those contributions anymore that's mm -hmm. it right so if i may say i'm sharing screen now if you go to physics physics website okay truevisionofis.com slash physics.html and you scroll down and you will see join us. So Julian, you, although you had uh, subscribed through uh, MailChimp, I urge you to go to physics website and click on join us or join okay. us is if you will get the airdrop because whoever join us as a member in physics will definitely be in on the list for Martin to airdrop. But if you feel that you got a, 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 a well, you know, you got projects and you've been doing humanitarian work for the last 10 years or so, and you've got uh, some technology or some projects that would benefit what mankind. We're looking for, what we're looking for is solution people based. standing in the solution space. If you've yeah. got standing in the solution space, we want to talk to you and we want to yeah. make you a millionaire. So if you are a solution-based person, and you, you would uh, want to click on the finder, the finder's membership, and, mm -hmm. and read about it, uh, what we're doing here, because we are forming a, uh, like a, a, a group of uh, solution 
uh, givers um, and if you click on the foundation here the foundation you will find out more about it Elizabeth and I had written that and uh, this is where Martin is the chairman and from the foundation it's like a breakaway community we are going to form our sovereign nation in Canada okay and uh, that's when uh, the funding from the uh, cryptocurrency ICO that uh, Marco Martin and I are working on will then um, come out with the funding to have all this possible thank you so that's it i've stopped sharing now you know what to do and the same let's goes let's wrap it up okay yeah. uh, this same is goes with all the viewers of this unbelievable video unbelievable uh, meeting and uh, uh, my heart is overwhelmed with the energy oh. and the love from oh Very martin good. oh bless your heart okay so we go around the table now i let me finish going around the table it's not fair for those who are being left out so so we have um Bosi said that we can't hear him he can speak um uh, Julian has already said his whatever he needs to say and then Pontus and Ron so we have literally gone round the table and uh, Mark you want to say some stuff uh, any unfinished business that you want to say before we wrap up the meeting and um, adjourn it? I'm just uh, this is all about public record we have to keep uh, as clean and, and truthful as possible you know obviously we want to be truthful Mm -hmm. um, but it's all public record, timestamp, transparency. That's kind of what blockchain is. This mm -hmm. is the new world. This, this is it. Um, well, this, is wh this is why we can't be stopped. Because exactly. if we just put it out there and it's like, well, if you could dispute it, we'll, mm -hmm. we will stop talking about that one little piece. Mm -hmm. But if, if it's truth, this is the future. Everybody knows it. We're giving it to the world. Yeah. And, and that's kind of where the world's going right now in, yeah. in everywhere. Yeah, just fancy so the, that the, we have the blockchain has tremendous promise you know and clarity yeah. and then there's there's lie and truth-telling technology if you go to john david oates and stuff like that these will be apps in the future a politician gets up on cnn and starts lying his ass and face off we'll have the indicator and in the widgets that says that motherfucker's lying right i have a lot of confidence in the success of the ico that we are planning and preparing for the solution coin with uh, the, the scientists of the first cryptocurrency, the inventor of the first cryptocurrency with us. I think well, I'm not, I'm not a scientist. Uh, but, well, uh, the inventor yeah, of the first I'm an inventor. In the world's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I, so I, I, I work with Mark almost on a daily basis. I know so he's gotta, incredible. That, that I really guy, love working guy, with him. He's a great really guy. Something. Yeah, and, really you know, and, 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 and the clinch, you know, you can count on that boy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I just love all of you here. We are family. One, and note, one note for the future, I think, is uh, go, goes without saying, is that uh, when we achieve uh, 5D, no one will be able to lie because everyone will be telepathic. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because impeccability is the the word of the day. <laughs> well, and that's and that's really exciting about our future is yeah. those that have preceded humanity to our 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 uh, you know our youthful uh, emergence, I guess, if you would, uh, teenagers, cosmically speaking, but into the world of the greater universes and worlds and realms, okay, all of those people achieved what they did because they clarified and cleaned up their bullshit and got to their integrity, okay? Mm -hmm. The blockchain promises all of that for us now. Certainly, here, here. Right, so there being no other business, this meeting is now adjourned to the 56th physics meeting that will be held on the 5th of September. So please pen that down in your diary. And we're gonna have, fingers crossed that Don Estes will be able to speak, um, truly speak on the, uh, the next meeting. That is on the 5th of uh, September, our 56th physics meeting. And, um, I think that's it and we can stop recording now there being no other business this meeting is now adjourned to the 56th meeting thank you okay